In this nutshell, I give USART coding examples. I look at transmitting and receiving data on the USART, and I code using both a structure and a state diagram. I will explain how the registers are coded and used for the USART operation. And remember, if you do find this video useful, please like and subscribe. An example of coding for a USART is shown here. We're using USART 2, and that's connected to the Mega Pro board USB connector. However, we can loop the transmitter back into the receiver using a digital switch, which is controlled by port H2. So we want to put the USART into loopback and transmit the switch and button values. These transmitted values will be looped back into the receiver, so read the incoming data on the receiver and store the value on the leads. So we can see our input shown here, and then the serial format is no parity, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, board rate 9600. If we look at the structure diagram, we set up the ports, we stand a while one loop, when the transmitter becomes empty, we transmit the buttons and switches. When the receive buffer becomes full, we store the data into the LEDs. Now I will go through the actual setups in a second, but we can see we've got the flags for receive buffer full, transmit buffer empty. We're combining the buttons and switches. We come into the while one, and if the transmit buffer is empty, we load the button switches into UDR2. If the receive buffer is full, then we store UDR2 into the LEDs. So looking at our defined statements, we are looking at UCSR2A, which is shown here. And we are looking at RXC2, which is this value here. Now we could either put in 7, one left by seven, but the compiler has defined RXC2 as seven already. So it just makes it clearer to read. So that's checking the receive buffer is full. And then we are looking at bit five here for the UDRE empty. Looking at the buttons and switches, pin H is from PH7 to PH4. What this will do is clear the lower four bits because pin H is looking at all seven or eight bits. Similarly, we are looking at pin A and pin A is PA3 to PA0. So this will clear PA7 to PA4. And then we combine these two together by doing a bitwise OR. So basically, pin switches will have the top nibble of pin H, 7 to 4, and pin A will have the lower nibble of pin A, 3 to 0. And finally, we define the LEDs as port C. Looking at the setup, we want to set for 9600 board. We do have a table that we can use for this. so. We've got an 8 meg clock on the microcontroller. 9600 board is 51. And so we can load that directly into the UBRR lower register. Now looking at the configuration of the control and status register B. These 7 bits, oh, sorry, these top 3 bits, 7, 6 and 5. Are used for the interrupts, so we have the interrupts turned off. Bits 4 and 3 power on the USART, so they are turned on. The bit here, bit 2, is used for defining the data size, that should be 0. And bit 1 and 0 are used for a 9 bit frame, which we're not using, so they are 0 as well. Next, we will look at configuring the UCSR2 
um, C register. So it's a bit messy, but I've got the register shown here. The first bits 7 and 6 are used to select what mode we're in. These are these bits here, they're 0, 0, which means we are in asynchronous mode. The next two bits here define the parity. We are 0, 0 as well, which means we are using no parity. The next bit here defines the number of stop bits that is shown here. That one which is 0, which means we have one stop bit. And then finally these last two bits here are setting the data size. They are set to 1, 1. So we come through here. Now previously in UCSRB we had set it to 0. So we are selecting 8 bits. So basically when you're setting up this register you need to go through the um, register description and assign every bit here for the correct setting. Looking at the next register, we are setting the data direction register for H. There's two bits that need to be set for output, uh, bit 2 and 1. So if we look here, bit 2 is used for the loopback, and then the user actually goes on bit 1 of that port. So therefore I set that for an output for the transmitter. I turn on the loopback switch and then I configure port C for outputs to dry the LEDs. I have written the code into Microchip Studio and I will download it into the Mega Pro board and we can see that running. So this is now reading the switches here and the buttons, transmitting it out the serial port, looping back to the input. So we can see the buttons here, they're active low. So when I push a button, we can see that that button or that button goes low. We can look, look at the switches here and we can see the output is appearing on port C. So we can see that running. I have repeated the same problem, except I am using a state diagram rather than a structure diagram, and I have configured the USART for even parity, five data bits, two stop bits, and a slow board rate of 150. If we look at the state diagram, we start in idle. If the transmit buffer is empty, we then go transmit the data and we automatically go back to idle. If the receive buffer is full, we go to the receive data state, receive the data and then go back to idle. So looking at this, these are the same uh, defines as in the previous code. We do have the state constants, idle, transmit and receive. We defined our state variable and initialize it at state idle. In our while one, we have a switch statement for our state machine. We have the state idle, if the receive buffer is empty, we go to state transmit. If the receive buffer is full, we go to state receive. In state transmit, we simply load the buttons and switches into the transmit register, go back to state idle. In the receive date, we read the receive buffer and store it into the LEDs, and then we go to the idle state. The first register we want to configure 
it's the board rate register U B R R two L and H. Now we're doing 150 board and you won't find that number in the tables. So we have to use the formula shown here. So we have an 8 meg clock and 150 board and this gives you a value of 3332. Now we need to convert that into a hex number which is 0D04 and then load the registers with the upper byte 0D into 2H and the lower byte 04 into UBRR2L and that will configure the board rate to 150. Uh, UCSR2B has not changed from our previous example. We merely turn the receive and transmit power on. I now want to configure the USAC control and status register C. Bit 7 and 6 select the asynchronous operation so they should be set to 0, 0 as shown here. Bit 5 and bit 4 are for the parity. We want even parity, 1, 0, so that is shown here. Bit 3 is the stop bit. We want two stop bits, so that bit should be a 1 as shown here. And then these two bits here are used to configure the character size. This bit here is selected in UCSR2B, but we want all those to be zero, and that is shown here. And that selects a five bit character size. And finally, DDRH, port H, and DDRC are configured the same as in the structure diagram. I have written the code into Microchip Studio and we can download it to the Mega Pro board to see it operating. So we are reading the buttons and switches, setting out the USART, receiving it and displaying it on port C. You'll notice that the upper bits, bit 7, 6 and 5 aren't displaying. That's because we are not sending the 8 bits, we are only sending 5. But we can see the operation of the lower bits.